The long college football offseason is mercifully nearing its end as the Georgia Bulldogs are set to kick off their 2024 fall camp on August 1st. So for us, that means it's time to kick our preview of Georgia's 2024 season into overdrive. So today, I am kicking off a series that will run daily all the way up to next Thursday when Georgia does kick off its fall camp, where I will break down the depth chart and the outlook at every single position on the Georgia roster in a nice, concise, but very much in-depth package for you guys. So this channel, guys, is going to be a one-stop shop for all of you diehard Georgia fans out there looking to get fully prepared and fully up to speed on Georgia's 2024 season, which is very much just around the corner. Up first is what I believe is the most intriguing and honestly most wide open position on Georgia's entire roster heading into the season, and that is the wide receiver. So let's get after it. We just stepped on their face with a hot nail boot and broke their nose. We just crushed their face. What's up, guys? I'm Tyler, and this is Glory UGA Plus, where I bring you a small sample of what we've got going on for you on the Glory UGA podcast. This video, as all of our videos, is brought to you by our great friends at Alumni Hall, so make sure to check them out when you're picking up your 2024 Georgia game day gear. And guys, I'm telling you, this channel is going to be your one-stop shop to get prepared for and up to speed on Georgia's 2024 football season. As I said at the outset, Today, I'm kicking off a series, a daily series, where I'm going to preview a different position on Georgia's roster every day leading up to next Thursday, which is when Georgia does kick off its fall camp on August 1st. We're going to have a different position preview every single day, guys. So make sure if you're not already subscribed to this channel and you're a diehard Georgia fan, you're going to want to get subscribed. So subscribe right now, like the videos, comment, and definitely, probably more than anything, Check out the Glory UGA podcast wherever you get your podcast for a lot more Georgia sports, Georgia football content like this. So check that out, guys. I think you will enjoy what you find on our podcast. But all right, let's dive into this Georgia wide receiver room. And man, what a fascinating room this is. I mean, think about the the, the guys that we have in this wide receiver room, guys. I, I know Lad McConkey is gone. Marcus Rosemi Jackson, he's gone. All right, well, who do we have left? Well. We'll go into a lot more detail, but just off the top here, we've got a couple of guys who have been the guy elsewhere. like been the leading receiver on other Power 5 teams, but haven't done it at Georgia yet. We've got a couple, I think, low-risk, high-reward transfers. Uh, an enigma who is looking to finally make a big splash in his fifth year. I think you probably know what I'm talking about, Arian Smith. We've got a couple of dynamic youngsters looking to find a way to carve out a role in this wide receiver room. We've got a jack-of-all-trades in Dylan Bell, who, yeah, is a wide receiver, but also kind of isn't always a wide receiver. So this room does, guys. It has a little bit of everything. I think that makes this room as a whole one of the, if not the most intriguing and fascinating positions on Georgia's entire roster heading into this season. So it's cool, man. I'm excited about, about this season. I'm excited about this wide receiver room. And if you think about this wide receiver room, on top of all the different guys we have and all these different bodies and all these, these different skill sets that they have, I think we maybe have one player that you can point to and definitively say, yeah, his spot is secure, right? Like he's got a spot. That spot is locked in. I think there's one guy probably that you can say that definitively about. So I think that's probably the best place to start here. Let's start with the headliners. And if we're talking about headliners in this Georgia wide receiver room, at least based off what we know coming into this 2024 season, we've got to start with Dominic Lovett, who is not new to this team. You guys know Dom Lovett. He was new last year, transferred in from Missouri, where he did, he did lead the Missouri Tigers in receiving back in 2022. We talked about it a couple times. In fact, we did a, a full breakdown of what we did with Dominic Lovett last year, how we used him in our offense, and how that may be different from how Missouri used him, and maybe some things that we can do to maximize his skill set and adjust how we use him, expand how we use Dominic Lovett. So make sure to check that video out for a lot more on Dominic Lovett if you haven't checked that out. But real quickly here on Dominic Lovett, 54 receptions last year, 613 yards, four touchdowns, solid numbers, but also like, you know, not number one wide receiver type numbers, modest enough. But as I said in the video last week, I don't think the numbers alone, if you're just stat watching with Dominic Lovett from last year, I don't think the numbers alone do full justice to exactly what Dominic Lovett is really capable of within the Georgia offense. As I said last week, 
We truly barely scratched the surface with what we can do with Dominic Lovett in our offense a year ago. We really, we really just kind of used him in a complimentary role. I mean, that, that's, that was his role, guys. I mean, you have Brock Bowers, and I know he's not a receiver, but kind of operated as one more or less, was a major factor, the major factor in our passing game. I know Lad McConkie was banged up for large portions of the year, missed about half the year all in all with injuries. But you got that guy, you got Brock Bowers too. Like, and we know Brock was a first round guy. Ladd easily could have been a first round guy and probably should have been a first round draft pick. So you have those two guys. They're going to be your feature guys. Like, they, they've done that for Georgia, right? So Dominic Lovett coming in last year, his role was going to be more of a complimentary type role to those two dynamic players that we already knew about coming to last year. But while that was how he was used last year, guys, like, let's not kid ourselves. Dominic Lovett is more than capable, fully capable of operating in a featured role in the Georgia offense. Again, we saw him do that in two, in 2022 with Missouri. Was a, a little under 900 yards receiving for Missouri that year, and he was an explosive, dynamic playmaker in that Missouri offense. And if you look back to last year with, with the 2023 Georgia team, like, no, he wasn't the featured guy. But also, I don't think there's any coincidence that Dominic Lovett's three biggest games last year in terms of receptions – came in games where either there was no Ladd and or Brock Bowers, right? So either they, those were games where either w- only one of those guys was playing the full game. I know Vanderbilt was one of his bigger games. Brock started that game, and he goes down, right? And then after Brock went down, what do we do? Oh, yeah, we start to, to find a way to get the ball to Dominic Lovett a lot more. So I think that's pretty telling about what we're going to do with Dominic Lovett heading into this season, right? I mean, again, like when Brock Bowers, Lavin Conkey weren't in the lineup or weren't fully healthy, who did we go to last year? More often than not, it was Dominic Lovett. Those guys are gone this year. So that's why I think at least coming in the season based off what we know, and G-Day is another indicator. I mean, we were trying to feed that guy the ball in the spring game. I know it's a spring game. I understand that, guys. But if you go back and look at what he did in Missouri, you look at the fact that we don't have Brock Bowers, no Lem McConkie. When those guys weren't fully healthy and weren't in the game last year, it was really Lovett who picked up the slack more than anybody else on the in the offense, and certainly in the receiver room. And now he's going to be in his second year in the Georgia system. I think all signs, along with the fact that he was really certainly featured at G-Day, I think all signs are pointing to Dominic Lovett being the guy, being the guy that we plan on featuring coming in the season, the guy that we have the most confidence in coming in the season. So I, I feel very confident saying that guy's entering. We'll see what happens during the season, but entering the 2024 season, which is all we can really talk about right now, I feel very confident saying that Dominic Lovett is going to be the guy for Georgia at receiver. Now, he's primarily a slot guy. We don't move around too much. Can he play a little Z? Yeah, he probably could, but he's more of a slot guy than anything. But he is still very much going to be the guy at receiver entering this 2024 season. But that doesn't mean that Dominic Lovett is the only guy for Georgia at receiver in 2024. That'd be a problem if he was the only guy because, I mean, it's much easier to take somebody away, a receiver, when they're the only significant option that you have. That's not the case for this Georgia wide receiver unit. There are actually a couple of other guys that I think have the potential to maybe take that title of the guy, to take that title from Don McLovin at some point in the season. And the two guys I'm looking at here are the guys in a battle right now to be the starter at the X receiver position, which are Ra Ra Thomas and Colby Young, two transfers. Now, Ra Ra, like Don McLovin, transferred to Georgia ahead of the 2023 season. Didn't have immediate success. You know, he, he dealt with some off the field issues, missed most of spring practice, that set him back a little bit. And he was adjusting more from like Mike Leach's air raid offense to a much more pro style attack with the Georgia offense. And there's certainly an adjustment period there. So right off the bat, he was an impact player. But as we got, you know, four, five, six games in the season, all of a sudden you see Ra Ra Thomas start to take some strides, man. Start to make some big plays. Had that crazy, ridiculous catch in Kentucky for a touchdown that, I, if I remember correctly, wasn't initially called a touchdown. And upon review, it was definitely a touchdown. And it was just a fantastic catch. Was making Had a big a big catch against Ole Miss. Was doing some really good things in the Georgia offense. Really starting to come on. Had a big catch in the Auburn game as well that uh, that helped us stay in that game. Gave us a chance to win down the stretch. So it was really starting to come along. But unfortunately, late in the year, suffered an injury that knocked him out for the last couple games of the year. So, I mean... On the front end, wasn't great. Had to adjust. Back end, injured. But what we saw in the middle of the season from Rara Thomas was really encouraging. And this is a lot like Dominic Lovett. This is a guy that we have proof of concept with. Not proof of concept in the Georgia offense necessarily. I know it was a different offense back in the air raid with Mike Leach. But he was the leading receiver at Mississippi State in 2022. So that's an SEC program, guys. We're not talking about a group of five program. Like, 
that translates, okay? It was just a matter of him getting up to speed in our offense and learning what to do because the adjustment for him coming into our offense last year was a, was a lot more difficult than it was for Dom Love. I'm not saying Dom Love didn't have some issues with that. You know, it's a different offense. But what he was doing at Missouri was far closer to what we do at Georgia than what Mississippi State was doing with uh, with Rob Rod Thomas under Mike Leach. Just, that was just an entirely different universe. So there's an adjustment period there. But now coming into his second year in the system, there's a really strong chance with a fully healthy offseason, getting all those reps or a mostly healthy offseason, getting those reps, not dealing with off-the-field issues. There's a really strong chance that Rob Rod Thomas could break out and be a big time. I'm talking like – Eight, nine hundred, who knows, thousand? I know we've only had one thousand yard receiver in Georgia history, which is still one of the most insane things to ever say out loud, but it's still true. Maybe he could be that guy. I mean, again, we saw him do it at an SEC school, not thousand yards, but was a leading receiver at an SEC school. So he's certainly a guy that could potentially become the guy. I wouldn't pinpoint him as the guy entering the season, but he's got that type of talent, that type of potential, and we've seen flashes of it. Now, Colby Young is a brand new player coming over from Miami was not necessarily the featured guy at Miami, but you have to understand the context of what was going at Miami. So Colby Young is a big target. And so was Ra Ra Thomas. Ra Ra is 6'2", 200. Uh, Colby Young, 6'3", 215. And he is a contested catch master. I mean, that's what this guy specializes, specializes in. That's not all he can do. I mean, in Miami, you go back and watch the tape. I mean, they're running screens with this guy. So he's a really good athlete at that size. But you throw the ball in the air, a 50-50 ball, especially in the red zone, I mean, the guy's going to make a play. I mean, at the very least, I think Colby Young is going to be a big-time red zone target for Georgia this year, but I don't want to limit him to just that. I think this guy could be a legit alpha number one wide receiver. And all of you who have been with me for past couple, however many years and heard me talk about Colby Young, certainly in this offseason, you know I've said that. You know, like, this is not new. I told you guys that as soon as we we, we got news that he was transferring to Georgia because I'm a college football junkie. I, obviously, Georgia's, like, my number one passion in life. And, yes, that's who I know better than anybody, but I just – Love college football, and I watch a ton of college football, and I'd watched a fair amount of Miami over the past couple of years. And so when, when we got news that Kobe Young was coming to Georgia, I was like, oh, yeah, let's go, because I know what he's capable of. I know the potential this guy has. Now, the numbers, if you're just stat watching, you're going to say, like, okay, like, whatever. But, guys, you got to look beyond the stats. You can consider the context of what he was working with at Miami. Their quarterback situation last year, guys, was a disaster, Okay. Tyler Van Dyke was okay at times early in the year, but then he just completely fell apart. Yes, he was doing some injuries. That certainly did not help. And then you're starting a freshman, Emory Williams, if I remember, remember correctly was his name, who was – I mean, he was a true freshman. The guy just wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. And what he did is he leaned on their slot receiver. He was more of like a security blanket, which was Xavier Restrepo. And so he was just kind of feeding him in the short intermediate range and allowing him to just kind of go work in space. And he wasn't really throwing the ball out to the numbers that much. He was really kind of focusing inside the numbers, which is where your slot receiver Restrepo is going to operate. So Colby Jones didn't get as many targets because of the quarterback situation. But he has the ability, guys. I'm telling you, he has the ability to be a legit, like, number one, one of the best receivers in the SEC. Now, will he live up to that potential this year coming to a brand new offense? I don't know. I can't guarantee that. All I can tell you is physically speaking, he's got the goods, man. He's got the goods. He's got the athleticism. He's got the size. He's got the contested catchability. He's got everything that you would want a wide receiver to have to be a big-time playmaker in a pro-style offense. He's got that stuff. So I think he can be. Will he do it? I don't know. And that's going to be a fascinating battle to watch at that X spot between Ra Ra Thomas and Colby Young. If I had to handicap it right now, I'd probably lean Ra Ra Thomas because he has been in the system for an extra year. But I, I don't know, man. Like, I just had this feeling the more the season goes on, the more opportunities that Colby Young gets, I think he's just going to make plays. I think it's going to make it really hard for us to not have him on the field. Look, both guys are going to play. Ra Ra is going to play. Colby Young is going to play at X. It's just a matter of like who starts. And does that even really matter? I don't know. You know how we rotate our receivers. All those guys are going to get a lot of reps. I think both those guys are capable of making big time plays for us at the X receiver position. All right. So that's the X spot. Well, what about the other side? What about the Z position? There, I think it's, and there's really two guys at the top there with this position battle. I think it's Dylan Bell, who played a lot for us as a true freshman. Remember when, when uh, A.D. Mitchell went out for the year with a sprained ankle, like essentially out for the, the entire regular season, with well, the last 10 games of the year with a sprained ankle? What well, was true freshman Dylan Bell, who stepped up and filled that void and started a bunch of games for us, played a lot for us as a true freshman. He was still a true freshman, made some solid plays, showed some signs, showed flashes, but wasn't consistent because he's a true freshman, right? So he got that experience there. But then last year... You know, we have all these injuries at running back coming this season, and we're just like, it's a mash unit back there. We need bodies. We need somebody that can run the football. And Dylan Bell looks like a running back. I mean, he's 
He's six foot one, two ten, but he's a thick two ten man. Like he looks like a back out there. So what do we do? Well, we need somebody to carry the ball. Let's hand him the ball. So you know, I got about twenty five touches last year, about one hundred and fifty five yards rushing, two touchdowns. Did some things there, but what that did is it took him out of the wide receiver room. He wasn't a full time wide receiver last year, but once we got healthier at running back. He moved back to more of a full-time wide receiver role and really started to come on later in the season. Again, I like Dominic Lovett, especially when Brock Bowers and, and Lab McConkey were, were either not playing or were basically playing on one leg. Dylan Bell started to, to emerge to some degree late last year and show you what that guy can do as a receiver, which is really what he projects to be. I mean, I think he can play running back if he wanted to, but I think in our offense, he's going to project more as a wide receiver. So right now, coming to the season, based off – what we saw from him at the end of last year, and now that he is working full-time as a wide receiver, I think there's a really good chance we see a big jump from Dylan Bell in year three in Athens. So I'm really excited about Dylan Bell. He's a physical receiver. He's not the most explosive receiver out there, but he has got plenty of explosive ability. He's also really physical. So getting off press coverage, getting off line of scrimmage, that is really where he excels. I've heard some people this offseason complain about him not being able to create separation. I don't agree with that. I can, is he going to pull away from somebody the way that Arian Smith is? Like, no, he's not going to run past somebody like that. But he's a really strong route runner. And that's for a guy who wasn't even, again, a full-time wide receiver. And that ability to get off line of scrimmage, to get off press coverage, that's creating separation too. I, I don't have any issue with Dylan Bell creating separation. I think he's going to be a really good receiver for us at that Z spot. And here's the other guy. I just mentioned him, Arian Smith. I, I think it's it's one of those two that are going to be the, the primary guy at that Z receiver. A lot like X is going to be rotational, They'll both play. But guys, Arian Smith might just be the biggest X factor on this entire team. I did a video, the top five X factors on this Georgia team about two weeks ago. So make sure to check that out. And I talked about Arian Smith on that video, guys. Look, Arian Smith does not have a ton of receptions in his Georgia career, all right? But the ones he does have, have been very memorable, right? You got the Alabama game last year, a big long catch. It wasn't a touchdown. It should have been a touchdown if Carson threw it out in front of him a little bit there. But hey, still a big play, set up a score for us, help us get back in that game. We all know what happened against Ohio State in that Peach Bowl a year or so ago. Just, I mean, that was an explosive play that reignited the crowd, got us right back in the game and gave us a chance to win. Actually, another huge catch in that game as well. So there's not a ton of catches and yards in Arian Smith's career at Georgia, but – there are some very memorable ones and some, some plays where we've seen this guy flashes and he just, it, it's a tantalizing talent. That's what this guy is. He is a, a track level. I mean, a, I don't say, I, I hear people say world-class track guy. I don't know if I go world-class, but he is crazy fast. A verified 10, 100 meter as a freshman, by the way, at Georgia when he was running track. Also uh, was a part of the four by one relay team with Matthew Bowen that holds the, uh, that finished second in the SEC and holds the Georgia record. So this guy, he's a legit track athlete, no doubt about it. He gave up track, but he's got that kind of speed. I mean, I know he's not a 99 speed on the EA Sports College Football 25, but like, come on, man. He's got to be a, a 99 speed. But the problem with Arian, as I've said many times, is he was so raw coming out of high school and then dealt with so many injuries early in his career, it just stunted his growth. He needed those reps badly, more so than your average receiver coming out of high school because he was so raw as a receiver, so much more of a track guy, just, a, just a, a raw, fast guy, just some putty out there that, you, that you're like, we got, we got to sign this guy because like that speed, I can't teach that, I can teach him to play receiver, but teaching him to play receiver – was more deal than maybe we anticipated because he was injured so much and wasn't getting the reps of practice. But now he's going to his second year of being fully healthy, right? And I know last year he dealt with some drops. I understand that. But Arian Smith still has something that nobody else on our team has, that type of speed. One of the, if not the fastest players in all college football. Like legitimately, guys, he is right up there. I mean, a small handful of the fastest guys in the country. He has that type of speed that is not only game-changing, but it forces defensive coordinators to game plan around that guy when he's on the field, all right? He's got the type of speed where legit, uh, you just, he just runs past me. It doesn't matter what your coverage is. He can run through the coverage. It doesn't matter. So if he can finally take the steps and learn more the nuances of how to play the wide receiver position, and he begins to really kind of capitalize on the immense potential he has with his physical tools, this guy could be a big time difference maker for Georgia. So that's why I think he's the one of the, if not the biggest X factors on our entire team. So I think this would be a, a battle between those two guys at the top for that Z position. And like I, I don't know who's gonna win it. I would right now probably project Dylan Bell because I've seen I've seen more of a complete game from him at receiver, even though he wasn't playing that full time than I have from Arian Smith. But guys, Arian, I'm just telling you, this guy from people I trust. 
took some really big strides during this offseason. All right. We're doing some really good things during fall or during spring practice. We didn't see as much of it during G Day. But another thing I can tell you about Arian Smith, guys, is that the team loves him. Everybody around him loves him. I don't know the guy, but all I've ever heard about him is people just rave about how good of a guy he is, how hard he works. So it's not one of these things where he's just not doing what he's got to do. No, not the case. People are rooting for him inside that butt smear building. And I know all of us outside the building are certainly rooting for him. So I think this has a chance to be a breakout year for Arian Smith. And then who are some other guys that might fit in that picture as well? Okay, well, we've got a couple of transfers. Michael Jackson the third coming over from USC. I don't exactly know what to think about him, right? So at USC, in three years at USC, Michael Jackson the third had under 500 yards receiving, okay? And he's, he's uh, got some positional versatility, six foot, about 200 pounds, so not super tall, but thicker as a wide receiver. I think he fits best as a slot guy, which doesn't bode well for him because we do have Don McLevick there, and he's going to be the guy at slot at the very least. But he also can play some Z. Like, he, they moved around a little bit at USC, and, and he did some good things at USC, but he was just never the feature guy, not really close to it. And there's really no shame in that when you consider some of the weapons that they've had at USC. At receiver, I mean, you had Jordan Addison, who was a Blitnikoff Award winner. So you have some big-time guys there, okay? You have Brendan Rice, some big-time players at the receiver position. He was just always behind those guys. So he transfers out, maybe a, a, a new look, some new scenery, new team, new offense can revitalize him and give him a chance. Like, I, can, I can tell you, if you go and watch his highlights, you watch a guy play – when he got opportunities at USC, he made the most of them. Like, he's a good football player. Like, he's not a scrub. I think he will be in the rotation this year. I just don't expect him to really contend to be like a, a primary option in the Georgia offense. And I think the same might be true of the Vanderbilt transfer, London Humphreys, who is coming to his second year of college. He was a freshman at Vanderbilt last year. A bigger guy, 6'2", about 200 pounds. And guys, London Humphreys can fly. The guy, I mean, that size, speed combination, 6'2", 200, I, I mean, I – I don't have verified numbers. I'd say watch him play, but he's a 4-4 guy. I mean, those are big-time physical tools, okay? Had nearly 450 yards receiving as a freshman at Vanderbilt last year with that quarterback situation. So I think within the Georgia offense, this guy will eventually develop into a very, very good receiver for us. Will it happen this year? I would lean towards no. Again, a lot like Michael Jackson III, I think that he will contend for reps. We, we rotate our receivers a lot. We have a pretty liberal rotation there. So I imagine that he will be in that picture, in that rotation, but I just don't really see him as a feature guy in year one. I could be wrong, though, because, again, the tools are there, the size, the speed, the combinations, all there. But you got all these guys in front of you. You're new to this offense. We saw it, it took Ra Ra Thomas. It took Dominic Lovett a year or so, at least a couple games or so to get up to speed in the Georgia offense. It didn't happen right away for them. So I think the same could probably be true for London Humphreys, but I do like him long-term. I think he's going to be a really good player and could certainly be a nice depth piece for us in this Georgia receiver room. All right, let's talk about a couple of sleepers here. Some guys I have not mentioned that I think could be just dynamite players for this Georgia offense. Maybe as early as this year, but if not this year, certainly in the next year or two. The first guy I have to mention is Anthony Evans, Okay. A lot of Georgia fans didn't even know who this guy was until the SEC championship game where we sneak him on the field for that punt late in the game against Alabama, and he almost breaks it, right? And then the next game against Florida State in the Orange Bowl has a slot fade touchdown, and it, you, you see the electricity this guy brings to this team, and he brings the wide receiver position. Now, he's a smaller guy, all right? He's 5'11", 165 pounds. He's a slot receiver all the way, and a lot like Michael Jackson the third, the, the problem for, for Anthony Evans – it's Don McLovin, all right? I mean, that, that's the issue here. Don McLovin is going to be that guy at slot. Again, at the very least, he might, he's probably going to be the, the guy in our entire receiver room, but certainly at that slot position, he'll be the starter. And Anthony Evans is going to back him up, okay? But when Anthony Evans gets opportunities, and I have to believe with the athleticism and the speed he brings to the table, he's not quite Arian Smith level fast. Arian Smith's 10, 100 meter fast. But Anthony Evans, as a high school football player, and track runner, was 10 to 700 meters. So he ain't that far off, guys. I mean, we're talking like legit track speed here, okay? He is an explosive play waiting to happen. I think he'll probably be one of our primary returners this year, whether it's kick returner or punt returner. He'll certainly be in that conversation, get some long looks there. And he's going to make plays for Georgia this year, guys. I'm telling you, he's too explosive, too dynamic to not make plays for us. I just don't think that he'll have as many opportunities as some of these other guys because of Dominic Lovett's presence at that slot receiver position. And the Evans will play. He's going to play. There's going to be rotation there. And he'll get opportunities. And one way or another, he is going to help Georgia win football games this year. The other guy that I think could be a sleeper for this Georgia offense, and I probably would not have said this a week ago, but we got about Sokovia White, guys. We got it's, it's time we talk about Sokovia White. So he, a very 
I say lowly rated, but underrated player in Georgia's 2024 recruiting class. I think one of the you know five or six lowest rated players in Georgia's class. He was a, a three star guy at a Cass High School here in the state of Georgia. Just wasn't a high profile receiver. He's one of those guys. You know, the Georgia's issues recruiting receivers in recent years is very well documented. So when we when you get a guy like that, you sign like that, there's people like Roland Smiles. Oh, okay, here we go again. Just another three star. Watch the tape, guys. Watch the tape. Turn the tape of Scoby White as a high school player. And what you see is a straight-up football player. He's just a football player. That's the way I describe him to people. He just knows how to make plays. He's tough. He's physical. He's athletic. He's fast. He's got strong hands. He's a good route runner. He does everything you want him to do. And he is, like, you know, Arian Smith was really raw coming out of high school. So Kobe White, not so much. However, I still wouldn't have said before last week that Sokovia might be a name that we need to mention in, in the wide receiver room this year because I thought there's you know there's so many guys ahead of him. I just don't know where his opportunities are going to come in. But then, fast forward SEC Media Days last week, and Kirby Smart, when he's asked about this number one 2024 recruiting class and who's some of the guys that, that made some strides in spring practice that you think can really help you this year, he says, well, very unsurprisingly, K.J. Bold, number one, duh, we know that. And then Sokovia White? Lowly three-star Sokovi White? I didn't see that one coming. Again, not that I don't think that Sokovi is a good player. I think Sokovi, I, I thought, you know, give him a year or two would be a really good player for us. I just didn't see it this year because I thought we had so many options ahead of him. He'd have a really tough time cracking the lineup, cracking the rotation. But apparently that's more of a possibility than, than, than I thought. Because, guys, I'm telling you, Kirby Smart doesn't just heap praise like that in those situations. He always defers or demurs and answers, you know, kind of in roundabout coach speak. But when he answered that question that directly, and you're throwing another different position, you're throwing Sokovi White in the same conversation with KJ Bolden. I, I'm listening. Kirby Smart doesn't say those kinds of things about true freshmen. He just doesn't. He doesn't want to put the expectations on them. So when he throws your name out, I gotta listen. I gotta pay attention. He's gotta be on this show today. We've got to talk about Sokovi White a little bit. So again, I don't. I don't think like like Anthony Evans. I don't expect it to be like a major part of the Georgia wide receiver room this year, but. I think there's a shot now that he does work his way in the rotation to some degree. And as the season goes on, he gets more and more comfortable in the offense. If he makes plays and he does get opportunities, maybe that role does start to expand. We'll see. You never know. It's the SEC guys. We deal with injuries. Saw Lab McConkey last year, Brock Bowers. If somebody goes down, maybe Scoby White can be a guy that can step up. And, and look, he, he also is a guy that has some positional versatility. Could play slot for sure. But he's big enough, strong enough to play. I don't think he's more of an – I don't think he can really – he could play X if he wanted to, but probably more of a Z guy. But he's got positional versatility, which will allow him more opportunities to get on the field earlier in his career. So just another little sleeper name to watch there, along with Anthony Evans. And then finally, guys, got one big question for this Georgia wide receiver. So we're going to do this for each of the positions that we preview over the next week, every day. We're going to have a big question, one big question for each unit. And the big question for the wide receivers, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty simple, guys. For me... Will this be the best wide receiver room in Georgia history? And that's not hyperbole, guys. I don't say that to be a homer. I know I run a Georgia podcast. You're sitting there rolling your eyes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Here we go. Again, it's a Georgia homer. You lose Lab McCall. We're going to call this the best receiver room in Georgia history. I mean, well, think about what we're talking about here, guys. We have two wide receivers, as I mentioned, and Rob Rod Thomas and Dominic Lovett, who have already led – Previous teams that they played for in the SEC, by the way, in receiving. We have a physical freak in Colby Young who has serious breakout potential. We have a guy that has proven to be a playmaker in limited opportunities, even when he wasn't playing receiver full time in Dylan Bell. You got Arian Smith, who could be the ultimate X factor, not just for George, maybe the entire SEC, if that guy can turn it on because he has something you just can't teach in that kind of speed. You have a couple of really promising young options with Anthony Evans and Sokovia White. Got some interesting transfers that can certainly be good, solid depth pieces for you. Do we have one player that is going to be like the best receiver in Georgia history in this group? No, I don't think so. If there was one, I would say like, in terms of like potential, maybe you would throw out Kobe Young. Like if he reaches that potential, I think his ceiling is higher than everybody else's. I just don't know how close we'll get to that ceiling this year. But I don't think like we have like a, an AJ Green type guy. We don't have one of these guys that you could like legitimately say is one of the best, like the best receiver in Georgia history. But that isn't like you don't you don't have to have a, one guy like that to say this is the best wide receiver room in Georgia history as a group. When you look at all the options, like guys, I mean, I think if you look at this receiver room, we we have I would say three to four legitimate breakout candidates. 
Three to four legitimate guys. I mean, I think Dominic Lovett is already that guy for us. I, I wouldn't qualify him as a breakout candidate because he led Missouri receiving two years ago. So that's not a breakout candidate to me. But maybe Ra Ra Thomas to some degree, certainly Colby Young, maybe Arian Smith, maybe Dylan Bell. Like all four of those guys could be breakout candidates in the entire SEC, right? And the thing is, like, we don't need all of them to hit. We don't need all three or four of those guys to be breakout stars for Georgia receiving this year. We just need one or two of them to hit to go along with Dominic Lovett, to kind of be a complimentary piece of Dominic Lovett. That's all we need. If that happens, along with the other guys, that their ceilings are made to be seen, guys like London Humphreys and Michael Jackson III, Anthony Evans, but I think at the very least have very high floors. I think absolutely, I lean towards yes right now. I lean towards the answer being yes, that this wide receiver room as a whole will end up being the best wide receiver room that George has had in the history of the program. Right now, I think that's more likely to happen than not. Will I be right? We'll see what happens. But right now, heading into fall camp, that's kind of how I see this wide receiver room. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. A lot more coming in. We're going to have a daily episode, daily video for you guys every day, all the way up to August 1st, when fall camp starts, previewing every single position on the Georgia roster just like this. We'll give you the breakdown with the, with the depth chart, the outlook, the sleepers, the biggest questions, all of those things. So make sure to check out all those videos, guys. And again, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel for your one-stop shop to get prepared for Georgia's 2024 football season. And make sure to check out the Glory UJ podcast wherever you get your podcasts for a lot more Georgia football content just like this for you guys, all the diehard Georgia fans out there. But I'm Tyler. Appreciate you guys. And as always, go dogs. Man, is there going to be some property destroyed tonight? 26 to 21. Dogs on top.